The year was 2013. A chilling film titled The Conjuring gripped audiences worldwide. It wasn't just the jump scares or eerie soundtrack, this movie had something more. It was based on true events. The story of the Perron family and their terrifying ordeal sent shivers down our spines. This essay delves into the real-life horror that unfolded in that haunted Rhode Island farmhouse. Prepare yourself, this is not for the faint of heart. 1971. The Perron family, filled with hope and dreams of a fresh start, moved into a charming farmhouse in Harrisville, Rhode Island. Little did they know, their dream home was a nightmare waiting to happen. Roger and Carolyn, along with their five daughters, were about to face unimaginable horrors. Their peaceful haven would soon transform into a battleground against unseen forces. The house held secrets, dark and sinister, waiting to be unearthed. From the moment the parents arrived, something felt off. Their dog, Sadie, refused to step inside. Animals are incredibly sensitive to the paranormal. Sadie's reluctance was a clear warning, a sign of the darkness that permeated the very foundation of the house. Her whimpers and attempts to pull away from the house were ignored. The family, blinded by their excitement, dismissed it as typical canine behavior. They would soon learn their grave mistake. The house had a large, forbidding cellar. It was a place that had been sealed off for generations, a part of the house that no one dared to explore. The door was massive, made of thick, ancient wood, and it seemed to whisper secrets of the past. It remained boarded shut, hidden from view. The planks were nailed tightly, as if to keep something inside. Over the years the cellar had become a legend among the locals, a place of mystery and fear. Curiosity got the better of Roger, he had heard the stories, the whispers of strange noises and eerie lights. Despite the warnings he felt an irresistible pull towards the cellar. He needed to know what lay behind that door. He decided to pry open the entrance, unaware he was unleashing a torrent of evil. With each creak of the crowbar, the air grew heavier, as if the house itself was holding its breath. The door finally gave way with a groan, revealing a darkness that seemed to swallow the light. The air turned icy cold as soon as the cellar door creaked open. It was a chill that cut through to the bone, unnatural and foreboding. Roger shivered, his breath visible in the frigid air. A musty, oppressive odor wafted out, stinging their nostrils. It was the smell of decay and neglect, of something ancient and forgotten. The scent was almost tangible, wrapping around them like a suffocating blanket. The family felt a presence. It was as if the darkness itself was alive, watching them with unseen eyes. They could feel it, a malevolent force that sent shivers down their spines. Something was watching them from the shadows. The darkness seemed to move, shifting and swirling, forming shapes that were almost human. Roger's heart pounded in his chest as he realized they were not alone. They had just opened a doorway to a realm they never knew existed. It was a place of nightmares, a world where the rules of reality no longer applied. The portal pulsed with a dark energy, beckoning them to step through and discover the horrors that awaited. Section 5307 AM, The Witching Hour, the time when the world is at its most vulnerable and the boundary between the living and the dead is at its weakest. It is a time steeped in mystery and fear, a time when the supernatural is said to be at its most powerful. As days turned into weeks, the paranormal activity escalated. The once quiet and peaceful home became a hub of inexplicable events. Objects would move on their own, doors would creak open and shut without any apparent cause, and strange noises echoed through the hallways. Clocks would mysteriously stop at 3.07 a.m. It was as if time itself was acknowledging the presence of something otherworldly. No matter how many times the clocks were reset, they would always halt at this exact moment, marking the arrival of the witching hour. This wasn't just a random occurrence, the house seemed to be alive with a malevolent energy, a force that grew stronger with each passing night. The flickering lights and the eerie silence were just the beginning. 3.07 AM is known as the witching hour, it is a time that has been feared and revered for centuries. Under the light of the full moon, the fog would roll in, creating an atmosphere thick with tension and dread. It's the time when the veil between our world and the spirit world is thinnest. The spirits grew bolder, whispers turned into growls, shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, and faint ghostly figures would appear and disappear in the blink of an eye. Cold spots became freezing zones, 
the temperature would drop suddenly, and the air would become thick with an unexplainable chill. Breath would become visible, and even the bravest souls would find themselves shivering in fear. The Perron family was trapped in a nightmare they couldn't escape. They huddled together, seeking comfort in each other's presence, but the fear was palpable. Their once happy home had become a prison of terror, and they were at the mercy of forces beyond their understanding. Section 6. Carolyn's Torment, Marked by Evil Carolyn, the mother, bore the brunt of the paranormal attacks. She would wake up with unexplained bruises, painful reminders of the unseen entity's rage, scratches would appear out of nowhere. The entity seemed to target her, tormenting her both physically and mentally. Her once vibrant spirit began to dwindle under the constant assault. Fear became her constant companion. Section 7. Christine's Terror a brush with the unknown. One night, young Christine Perron had a chilling encounter. She woke up to see a shadowy figure standing at the foot of her bed. Its eyes glowed with an eerie, malevolent light. Paralyzed with fear, Christine could only watch as the entity glided closer. It leaned down, whispering menacingly in her ear. The experience left Christine traumatized, forever scarred by the horror she witnessed. Section 8. Bathsheba's grip, the malevolent matriarch. Through their meticulous research, the Perone family uncovered a horrifying truth that would forever change their lives. Their home, a seemingly innocent farmhouse, was once owned by Bathsheba Sherman, a woman shrouded in dark legend and suspicion. Bathsheba lived and died in the 1800s, but her story was far from over. According to local lore, Bathsheba was a suspected witch, accused of practicing dark rituals and malevolent sorcery. The most chilling part of the legend was that Bathsheba had allegedly offered her own child as a sacrifice to the devil, sealing her fate as a figure of fear and revulsion. Now, her malevolent spirit filled with jealousy and rage haunted the house, tormenting anyone who dared to reside there. The Perrons soon realized that they were not just dealing with any ordinary haunting. The Perrons were not just dealing with any entity, they were facing a powerful and vengeful spirit one that had a deep connection to the very land their home was built upon. As they delved deeper into the history of their home, they found more unsettling details. Bathsheba's influence seemed to permeate every corner of the house, from the creaking floorboards to the whispering walls. The family experienced unexplainable phenomena, objects moving on their own, eerie shadows that seemed to have a life of their own, and whispers that echoed through the halls at night. The more they learned about Bathsheba, the more they understood the depth of her malevolence. She had been tried for witchcraft, but due to lack of evidence, she was never convicted. However, the stigma and fear surrounding her never faded. Desperate for answers, the Perones consulted with paranormal experts who confirmed their worst fears. Bathsheba's spirit was not just a lingering presence, it was an active force intent on driving them out or worse. In a bid to reclaim their home, the family performed cleansing rituals, burned sage, and placed protective symbols around the house. But Bathsheba's grip was strong, and her malevolent energy seemed to resist all attempts to banish it. Despite the overwhelming fear and the relentless haunting, the Perrons remained determined to fight for their home. Their story is a testament to the human spirit's resilience in the face of unimaginable terror. Section 9, The Warren's Intervention, A Beacon of Hope. Desperate, the parents turned to renowned paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren for help. The Warrens, known for their work on the Amityville horror case, were their last hope. They arrived at the farmhouse armed with crucifixes, holy water and years of experience battling the forces of darkness. The stage was set for a terrifying showdown between good and evil. Section 10. Legacy of Fear. The Enduring Haunting. Despite the Warrens' intervention, the Peron family's nightmare continued. The haunting left an indelible mark on their lives. Years later, the memories of their time in the Harrisville farmhouse still haunt them. The events that transpired there became a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurks beneath the surface of our world. The Peron family's story stands as a testament to the terrifying power of the unknown. Section 11. Conclusion. The Conjuring's Reality. The Conjuring brought the Perrone family's story to life on the big screen, terrifying audiences worldwide, but the film is just a glimpse into the real-life horror that unfolded in that Rhode Island farmhouse. The true story, with all its chilling details, continues to send shivers down our spines, 
reminding us that some things are better left undisturbed. The next time you watch The Conjuring, remember that behind the fiction lies a terrifying truth.